The health and sustainability space is one of Australia's fastest growing sectors as people look to transition to environmentally friendly ways of living. A new book, Low Tox Life, is sharing the latest science and advice from experts on how to live with a low tox imprint for both you and the planet's well-being. Alex Stewart is the founder of the movement and joins me now. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. Alex, what is a low-tox life? So when I came up with this phrase, it was 12 years ago, Bub was asleep and I was thinking I'd learned a lot about our food systems, about how to tidy things up in our personal care and in our cleaning to reduce some of the apparent uh, environmental toxins that I had started to research just for personal health gains. And I wanted to create something that was not perfect, you know, no and zero. You know, one of my least favourite phrases was chemical free, given there are so many safe chemicals we're literally kept alive by every day. And I wanted to birth a bit of a movement that allowed imperfection as we all strive to do a little better for ourselves, but also for the planet. Now, tell me, what have you seen over the last 12 years or so? Well, I have definitely seen people at large become far more passionate about where things come from, how they're made, and really demanding a lot more transparency from the everyday things that we use. That's probably the major thing. Mm. I suspect the question that you get asked the most is, what can I do to change? How can I make a, a difference for my health, for that of the planet? So when it comes to food, with my latest book, we really deep dive into the three biggest overlaps all eaters can get on board with. And what I love about arriving at this conclusion is that you can subscribe to different dietary preferences, beliefs, uh, and uh, just things that work for your body better, but we can all unite with some really common overlaps. And those three are food waste elimination and turning waste into the precious resource that it is, uh, eliminating processed food and ultra processed food as much as we can. Now that's a tough one because there's a big cultural shift that's going to be required there. Um, but the average shopping troll is 50 to 60% ultra processed food in this country. So with that statistic, and you think about how much petroleum goes into uh, shipping the raw materials to the factories to then produce the processed foods, to then ship it to another, you can start to very quickly see how much this impacts climate change. Uh, and then of course, the third thing is starting to think about where we're sourcing our everyday food from and just starting to make some connections with farmers, seeing how different forms of farmers, uh, different forms of farming methods are uh, more regenerative and less extractive as we work towards literally from the ground up, from the soil, uh, building a healthier planet for the future. I think most people will be surprised to hear that number you just quoted, 50 to 60% of the average uh, <laughs> shopping I was shocked myself. That's, that, yeah. that is incredible, isn't it? It really is. And I think it speaks to the fact that we've been sold on a message of convenience for decades now and that um, processed and corporate food was the answer to make life easy for the family or to make your break fun or to, you know, give you the real thing. Uh, and we know all of these catchphrases. And I think what's really uh, amazing is the opportunity to maybe dismantle some of that hold that is had on us through marketing messages and start reconnecting to nature, start reconnecting to nature's marketing calendar, you know, getting excited about the cherries coming in December and then eating too many cherries, getting sick of them, but you haven't seen them till next December, so you're all excited again. And I think we've lost that by being sold to from the television. And well, there's so much in that about that convenience factor as mm. well, but you really advocate, yeah. as you've just touched on, for a seasonal diet, which I guess is going back to basics, isn't it? Of what you can grow yeah. at any time of the year. That's what you consume. Absolutely. And if all of us can just start to grow a couple of herbs on the windowsill, I'm in an apartment myself, so I don't have acres and acres uh, to do a perfect biodynamic uh, plantation, but we can all do something, plugging into that community garden, getting a worm farm with the family and getting the kids excited. There's just so many things we can do to make a difference and reconnect. I mentioned at the start how this is one of the, the fastest uh, or faster growing economies and areas in Australia and certainly uh, that focus on organic is amongst that as well. What do you attribute that incredible growth over the last couple of years? Look, Dan, if you look at the public health figures, I think most people are just sick of being sick. 
we've come to see some sort of chronic illness or some sort of issue. I mean, look at our kids, nearly 10% of them with um, severe allergies of some kind to foods now. Now, you and I remember when we were kids, hardly any of this existed, and that was only 30 years ago. So a lot has changed in our environment. We've hyper-urbanised. We've disconnected from nature even more with this reliance on ultra-processed foods and convenience. And we're starting to see the ramifications of that. And I think the human spirit just knows that it's not normal for so many people to be so chronically unwell. And we're starting to think a little more deeply into why that is and starting to connect to what seem to be some really obvious answers. What impact do you think COVID-19's had on that? Has it sped it up? Uh, look, I would love to have seen more uh, messaging around how we can start to eat more nutritious foods, more vitamin-rich foods, which are, of course, super beneficial to an immune system when we're in the midst of a global pandemic. Uh, but I think there's a, a groundswell for that to start happening naturally anyway. So hopefully it will play a more important role in the public health conversation. Yeah, what well, a conversation it is. Alex Stewart, Low Tox Life, thank you so much for joining me this Arvo. Thanks so much, Dan, for having me.